Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Angel Azara and I'm a professional opera singer and voice teacher and today I am getting back to some regularly scheduled content or at least like normal content that y'all are used to and hopefully here for. Yeah it's been a while as evidenced by the blonde hair since I've done a reaction or analysis video. So I decided not that I can call it easing back in but I decided to do one of my favorites. We're doing a Dimash Kudai Bergen and because this video will post on my birthday I'm doing Sinful Passion because it just sounds really sexy and I was like, yes, this is my birthday gift to me. I want to listen to Dimash sing this song and attempt to analyze it again as best as I can. If you want to like and subscribe because this video is going out on my birthday, that would be great. I got really self-conscious all of a sudden. I hope I don't have lipstick on my teeth. I put this on without looking at it. So, oh, also I should note before I start, sorry. I should note that I did do, for anybody here who's new, I did do a sort of Dimash pedagogical case study because he has a very, very interesting and unique and extremely thrilling voice. And I was like, I can learn from this. You know, if I sort of analyze all of Percy, I did a case study on Dimash a while back. I did it chronologically. I did sort of jump ahead because of a special vote in that we did. And I did Your Love out of order because it was such a new release. Um, this is while I was in Boston with Claudia. Otherwise it was chronological, but so many people told me to go back and listen to Sinful Passion. So here we are. Happy birthday to me. Впервые на новой волне. Прорыв года. Димаш Кудайбергенов. С песней «Грешная страсть». He loves these emotional and quiet intros. Okay, so... You guys know by now, I assume, that I don't really like breathy intros because for a lot of singers, that's all they can do. You know you know what I'm talking about, ukulele girls. A couple of singers that I'm not gonna mention that literally the only color they have is like 15% of their actual voice and 85%. <sighs> I think I've changed my tune about when Dimash sings with a lot of extra air. Because he, you know what? If he wants to sing with air at the beginning of phrases and sort of do like these slow, emotional, and very internally focused intros, and he wants to color it with breath, fine. Totally, totally fine. And I'm really starting, it's starting to grow on me because I know that Dimash has 200,000 other colors that he can use and other effects that he can use in his voice. It's not just gonna be breathy forever. I'm starting to get conditioned to hearing these sort of breathy intros from him where everything is very internal and I just know that there's gonna be like an emotional break coming later because he doesn't do any of these really soft and delicate nah, without it going somewhere big. So let's see what the payoff is gonna be. Let's keep going. Oh, okay, so already there's more core to the sound. He had that little 30 second phrase that was very breathy, very internal, and then just a little bit more out. He's like a fisherman, you know, he just like cuts some slack and then reels you in just a little bit and then cut some slack and then reels you in. He just knows, and I say this with all of the best intention and admiration in the world, he knows how to manipulate an audience into getting the exact emotional response that he wants. You know who else can do that? Puccini. Every song, every aria Puccini ever wrote, by the end of that aria, you are experiencing the emotional response that he wanted you to experience. And Dimash performs very much in the same way. I mean, and I know he's a very, very intelligent man, 
And I imagine that his scores have to be so marked up with all of the details that he wants to happen. If anybody has any videos to Percy, if anybody has any details on Dimash or videos to link in the comments below on Dimash's like sort of method for learning music, that would be really interesting for me to watch. Let's keep going. Okay, I know I'm stopping right in the middle. The immediate color switch right there. The immediate color switch was just so good. And you know, it's not, it's not that doing a color switch in the middle of a phrase like that is incredibly difficult, but a lot of singers just don't do it. They just don't put in the work or they don't contemplate how they want to perform a piece. They just like get out there and they're like, mm, the spirit's moving me, I'm just gonna sing. I say that really flippantly. I shouldn't because that's a great way to sing too. And I also perform that way. Like some days I just go out there and I'm like, yes, this is me today, feeling emotion. But when you perform this much at this high a level, sometimes you've just got to like break it down. Be like, here I want this color. On this word I want this color. And then you do it every time and every time it's like a stand out, knock em dead, iconic performance that people will watch forever and ever and ever. Yeah, I mean, he just has so many tools to pull from. The breathiness when he's saying, give me. Mm -hmm. And then when he goes into talking about the flame and talking about the weather and he puts just a little more core into the sound. And then when he repeats the text and says, give me again, give me again, twice in a row. And that last give me is just so dark and so completely in his throat. Yes, he's manipulating it a little bit by pressing his tongue down, which in turn pushes down the hyoid bone, which pushes down the voice box. And then you have a depressed larynx and a darker sound. But I know that he knows how to keep his larynx in a healthy position. I know that because I've seen evidence of it constantly in his performances. So if he wants to do that to get a darker color in his middle, not even his middle voice, like, yes, yes, sir, you do that thing because it sounds freaking great. And I mean, there, again, he goes back to that little bit of breathiness, but you know, it's really, really nice that they have subtitles on this because I can take into account a little bit more about why he's doing the colors that he's doing based on text. I mean, he's just word painting with his voice and it's beautiful when he's talking about eyelids closed, hands face, and it all goes back to this very, very internal focus. And one thing that I think is really special about Dimash as a performer, and again, I have analyzed Dimash's vocal technique like so many times. Um, this is not gonna be that video. It, it really is a little bit more of a reaction today because this is, my, this is my birthday video and I'm just having fun listening to him. If you want to get more into like the really nitty gritty technical stuff and physiological stuff that I do love to talk about forever, um, watch one of the other videos. One thing I really like and think is special about Dimash is that he doesn't always reach out to the audience. Like there are so many performers out there that are just like, and I'm not bashing them. I'm just saying Dimash is different in some of his performances. But a lot of, of, uh, of moving performances that I see are performers that are like, this is me, this is me, here I am, blah, blah, blah. And they're just like flinging their soul at you, which is, Amazing. But when Dimash goes into this very internal place, I do not feel like he is 
sharing himself. I feel like he's just pulling us in. He's just drawing us in instead of being like blatantly hurling his voice at us. And it just puts me on the edge of my seat. It makes me want to listen to him more. And you know, it could be that he's like marking up his scores and you know, getting really detailed with everything. And I think that's part of it. But it's also just the way that he performs. Um, there's just a mystery to him and the emotions that he brings to a performance that I feel it's internalized in a way that makes me want to experience it for myself or figure out what's going on in his head. You know, A, B, C, D, all of the above. Let's keep going. It's just, this is, I think, I don't want to say this is my new favorite because I feel like I've said that like three or four times. And some people probably don't think, I mean, I don't know what's coming next because I haven't listened to it, but maybe people don't think this is his most dramatic piece, but I think this is a very sophisticated piece because he isn't just going, here is my head voice, here is my baritone voice, here is my tenor, here is my amazing mixed voice that sounds exactly like, you know, a woman on Broadway. Instead, he's doing these really nuanced and sophisticated color changes that slowly build into new styles. So now he's in this like really, really beautiful mix that's slightly on the chesty side. And he's also coming in full vibrato on these like sforzando entrances. Ah, ah. And it's beautiful, but it doesn't seem like, and it's a huge change from the beginning, but it doesn't feel that way because he's slowly sort of shifted the the color scale that he's on instead of doing these big dramatic shifts. And I think that this is, I don't want to say it's just as difficult because I do think that the really like whiplash inducing switches are incredibly difficult technically, but this is just very sophisticated color painting. Um, approve. I love. <laughs> Okay, I always love it when he, ugh, I love it when he goes into head voice. So there immediately he switches out of like the sophisticated sort of color shifting that he's been doing. And now he does do what Dimash is famous for, big shifts into different styles. Goes into like a very musical theater belt with vibrato and then he goes into a straight tone sort of pop rock. I usually call those skrelts, but it's not really a skrelt when he does it. It's just a straight tone belt. And then from then on, straight into head voice, beautifully done. And again, I talked about this in Your Love, but whenever he jumps into his operatic sound, there's just a little bit more feeling of low support that you need, like even from the pelvic floor, like way deep down in there. And just look at the way that he stands. He stands with his torso a little bit his back a little bit bowed and his knees a little bit bent. Like he's getting very connected with his low body when he jumps into his head voice. And yes, that's exactly what he should be doing. Cut off the note, sorry.
go over the 30 second increments I'm supposed to do because Dimash doesn't breathe. Okay, control yourself. First of all, at the beginning of that new section, is that like an Eastern European folk tradition that I am not aware of because I am admittedly like indoctrinated to Western European music and I need to learn more about different styles of singing that aren't dead white guys from Germany. Like I do fully admit I need to work on that. Or was it a goat troll? Because it kind of sounded like a Baroque goat troll. Um, either way, it was very interesting. And then he goes straight through nasopharyngeal resonance into this amazing, well, he did the, the rock belt, straight tone belt that we always appreciate. And he approached it the same way he did before. Musical theater belt, solid amount of chest, full vibrato, and then straight into the straight tone rock pop belt as he goes higher. Then he jumps into this extended cadenza. I mean, I'm just saying what you just heard and you, you guys know what this stuff is. He jumps into this extended cadenza, but he's changing the cadenza as he goes without taking a breath. I heard a little bit of mix heavier on head. Then I heard like R&B styling to the cadenza, which was great sounding. And then, you know, just the fact that he didn't take a breath for like 40 five freaking seconds. This man, I'm telling, like, I should just go be an accountant sometimes. Okay, so uh, I also well spotted Krutoy in the audience, um, standing ovation. Yeah, so well done. Of, I mean, of course it was going to be. And just a really quick note on the points that I sort of made throughout this performance about uh, a singer who doesn't just rely solely on the emotion behind the voice or behind the text, who chooses to sort of like map out or choreograph his music. Look, I would love to believe that every single singer out there just puts themselves out there emotionally and that's all they do. And every time they sing, they're like inspired by God or the arts or whatever, but it just isn't the case. And it's not fair to ask artists that, to constantly be like ripping out their souls. It's not sustainable. If he's doing eight, you know, eight performances a week, that is not sustainable for him. And to sing this type of music with very heavy emotion is impossible. You have to save your voice so that the audience experiences what they need, not so that you experience what you need. And sometimes singers have those very cathartic performances and sometimes we give the audience what they need to hear, what the composer wrote into the piece. And it's just so beautiful to see it happen where it all lines up and you get the emotion from the performer. And then on top of that, you get all of the intellectualism of it, all the different colors, the really sophisticated color changes that happen throughout. And that's what I got from this performance today. And I'm not gonna say I wasn't emotionally affected at all. And you know, as much as I like to put on my thinking cap and really analyze when I'm listening to a performer that I like, that doesn't mean that just because I'm thinking about the breath or whatever, that I'm not also intrigued or inspired or enjoying a performance. Um, honestly, the more I can dig into technique, the more invested I am in that singer because that's just what, how my brain works. That's what I like. So for me, Dimash is always just fun. It's just fun. Whether I'm getting really nitty gritty with, why do I keep saying nitty gritty like I'm a grandma? Whether I get really detailed into the analysis of his voice or whether I'm just reacting to it and enjoying a performance. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching my birthday treat to myself. If you enjoyed this or found it informational or helpful at all, um, please like and subscribe. And as always, toy, toy, toy until next time.